So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. If 1, 2 is a point on the graph of f of x, which ordered pair must also be on the graph of y equals f of the quantity x minus 2 minus 3? So here's the given point 1, 2, where x equals 1 and y equals 2. And again, this is a point on our function f of x, therefore we can say that f of 1 equals positive 2. We want to find a point that would be on y equals f of the quantity x minus 2 minus 3. There are a couple ways to determine what point must be on this new function. One way would be to recognize the translations based upon this function notation. So for a review, if we begin with a function f of x where both c and d are positive, y equals f of x plus d would shift the graph up d units since the function values here are y values so if we add d to the y values, it would shift the graph up. Versus here, if we have y equals f of x minus d, we're now subtracting d from the function values or y values, which would shift the graph down d units. Next we have y equals f of the quantity x plus c. Notice how this plus c is going to affect the inputs into our function, and because we're adding c to x, we would actually have to use smaller values of x to produce the same inputs as the basic function f of x, which means by adding c here, it would actually shift the graph left c units because we'd be using smaller values of x to produce the same inputs as f of x. And then finally we have y equals f of the quantity x minus c. Notice here we're subtracting c from x and therefore we have to use larger values of x to produce the same inputs as the basic function f of x. So because we're using larger values of x, it would shift the graph right c units. So going back to our example, using translations, f of the quantity x minus 2 would shift the graph of f of x, or in this case the point, two units to the right, because we'd have to use an x value two units larger to get the same input. And then this minus 3 on the end here takes these function values, or y values, and subtracts 3, which means it would then shift the point down 3 units. Which means the point 3 comma negative 1 must be on y equals f of the quantity x minus 2 minus 3. To make sure that we really understand this, let's look at this another way. Let's say we wanted the input of this function to be positive 1 so that we knew the output would be positive 2. If we want this input to be positive 1, notice how x would have to be equal to 3. Because if we have y equals f of the quantity 3 minus 2, and then minus 3, notice how 3 minus 2 is 1. So this would give us y equals f of 1 minus 3. But notice how by setting x equal to 3, it shifted the point 2 units to the right. And then finally, since we know f of 1 equals 2, we can say y equals 2 minus 3, which means y equals negative 1. So by subtracting 3 from these function values, it actually shifted the graph down 3 units, giving us the y-coordinate of negative 1. So whichever way we look at it, this point, 3 comma negative 1, must be on the function y equals f of the quantity x minus 2 minus 3.